Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome to our latest Escape Room series, which is all about the fruit of the spirit. Now, this is not fruit that you can eat like pineapples and apples. It's a different kind of fruit. The Bible says that as we grow in our faith, we can let the Holy Spirit transform us, which means to change us, to be more like Jesus. That's what is meant by fruit. Now, I need your help to solve the puzzles and uncover the clues to find out more. We're going to be reading the Bible together and finding out what it means to be a follower of Jesus and how we do that in our everyday lives. Let's start by reading the Bible together. It's just two verses in the New Testament from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Oh, oh no. I've just been told that a bug has eaten a word on our database. Let's watch the video to find out what's missing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Oh dear, what is the missing word? What fruit of the Spirit is it? I need your help to uncover the missing data so we can find out. Can you help me? I think it's time to enter the escape room. Thank you for visiting or reminding our kids escape room. You have three minutes to find the keys and unlock the words. Look high and look low, solve puzzles. But don't take too long. You must solve the puzzles and find the clues to restore the data before the time runs out. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Okay, where should we start? Well, we've got a table over here. Um, there's, there's a present. Um, I wonder what's inside. Um, and there's, oh, there's a nice thank you card. Um, and there's a picture of someone reaching out at their hand to help someone up a hill. Um, and what do they all have in common? Uh, is, is it about helping? Okay, no buzzer. So that is not what we are looking for. What else could the connection be? Um, do you know? Oh, it's a tough one. Um, but, oh, is it about thinking of others? Oh, great, that means it's correct. Okay, what's next? Well, we've got a screen over here with some pictures on it. Let's see. There is a picture of Ruth and Naomi. Uh, there is a picture of a man helping someone in need. Um, it's from the parable that Jesus told um, called the Good Samaritan. And the last one is Jesus on the cross. But what all do, they, do these pictures have in common? Oh, could it be that they're all stories from the Bible? Okay, no buzzer there. That is correct, but not the answer we're looking for right now. What else could it be though? Um, well, Ruth is from the Old Testament and Jesus and his parables are written in the New Testament. So, so what really connects them? Oh, is it about putting others first? Oh, great, that means it's correct. Ruth stayed with Naomi when she could have her le she could have left her and gone home. There is a whole book in the Bible called Ruth all about it. The Good Samaritan helped the man who had been robbed even paying for him to be looked after. And then at the cross, Jesus put us first by going through that pain and suffering and for a short time se separation from God so that we could know his salvation and have a relationship with God. Okay, final puzzle is this word puzzle. Are you ready? Okay, let's see. Okay, there's an eight letter word. Can you guess what it is? Uh, let's, let's, try, let's try a vowel to begin with. Um, what about you? Okay, there's no U. What about an A? Okay, none of those. Okay, let's try another vowel. Uh, what about E? Okay, oh yeah, nice. There's one of those, great. Let's, let's, try, let's try an S. Oh, nice, we have two of those too. H have you got it yet? Um, let's do, let's, let's try an N. Oh, lovely, there's two of those. And it ends with Ness. Uh, let's, let's do an I. Nice, one of those. I think I have it, but let's do one last letter to make sure. Is, is there a K? Yes! Is the word kindness? Great! That means it's all correct. Well done! 
Escape room complete. Congratulations, you have solved the puzzles and found the clues in the given time. You have restored the lost data. You may now exit the escape room. Let's reboot the database and put in the missing words. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Well done. Let's find out more about kindness in our Bible reading today. It's about King David and a young man called Mephibosheth, and you can find it in 2 Samuel 9, starting at verse 1. David asked, Is there anyone still left in Saul's family? I want to show kindness to this person for Jonathan's sake. Now there was a servant named Ziba from Saul's family. So David's servants sent Ziba to him. King David said to him, Are you Ziba? He answered, Yes, I am Ziba, your servant. The king asked, Is there anyone left in Saul's family? I want to show God's kindness to this person. Ziba answered the king, Jonathan has a son still living. He is crippled in both feet. The king asked Ziba, Where is this son? Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amnion in Lodabar. Then King David had servants bring Jonathan's son from the house of Machir, son of Amnion in Lodabar. Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son, came before David and bowed face down on the floor. David said, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth said, I am your servant. David said to him, Don't be afraid, I'll be kind to you for your father Jonathan's sake. I will give you back all the land of your grandfather Saul and you will always be able to eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed to David again. Mephibosheth said, You are being very kind to me, your servant, and I am no better than a dead dog. Then King David called Saul's servant Ziba. David said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You, your sons, and your servants will farm the land for Mephibosheth. You will harvest the crops, then your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will always be able to eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba said to King David, I am your servant. I will do everything my master, the king, commands me. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as if he were one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. Everyone in Ziba's family became Mephibosheth's servants. Mephibosheth was crippled in both feet. He lived in Jerusalem and always ate at the king's table. Before David was king, he was best friends with a man named Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of King Saul and he was the rightful heir to the throne of Israel. Had Saul not disobeyed God, Jonathan would have become king when his father died. Jonathan loved David like a brother, and David loved him in return. Jonathan loved David even though he knew David would one day sit on his throne. He helped David escape from his father's plot to have him killed, but before they parted ways, David promised to do kindness to all of Jonathan's family, which meant King Saul's family too. Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. At the same battle, both King Saul and Jonathan were killed, which would make Mephibosheth next in line to be king. You would have thought that David might have found Mephibosheth and had him killed to prevent anyone from trying to take the throne away. Instead, David showed kindness to Mephibosheth and his family. And it was more than just being pleasant and nice and saying a few kind words. He welcomed him into the palace and treated him like his family. Kindness means making an effort to do good to others. Kindness isn't something we do just when someone is kind to us. God wants us to be kind to everyone, even those who are not kind to us, so we can show His love to others. Kindness is not something that comes naturally and we can often overlook it. Sharing can be tough. Giving things we own away isn't easy. Being polite or helpful is not natural either. Our natural inclination is always to look out for ourselves. We don't want to be kind to others. 
We want the world to revolve around us. Kindness takes effort. It means seeing and seizing the opportunity to do good to someone else. Kindness also means we do not judge. We are kind to everyone. We are kind to those who love us and kind to those who dislike us. We repay kindness with more kindness and we repay mean words, hateful actions and other unkind acts with, you guessed it, kindness. The Bible tells us that kindness is what Jesus shows us even when we don't deserve it. So when we show kindness to others, we are showing them how Jesus treats us. We need to practice kindness. The more it's our first response, the more natural it will become and the Holy Spirit will help us. It might be letting someone go first in a game or finding out the name of a new kid in class and helping them settle in. It might be saying kind words at home and helping without being asked. But it's not doing it begrudgingly or complaining. And Jesus doesn't want us to do things because we, have a, we don't have a choice and inside be all grumpy and sad. No, He wants us to show kindness because that's our reflection of what's in our hearts. When kindness grows inside of you, you begin to put others first. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, Be kind and loving to each other. Forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Forgiving others is always part of being kind. Jesus doesn't want us to hold bad feelings towards others as that will just make us feel sad. He wants us to forgive others even when they don't say sorry, just like Jesus forgives us. Titus chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 say, But then the kindness and love of God our Saviour was shown. He saved us because of His mercy, not because of good deeds we did to be right with God. He saved us through the washing that made us new people. He saved us by making us new through the Holy Spirit. When God the Father sent Jesus to rescue us, it wasn't because we deserved it. It was God showing His kindness to us, His mercy. Mercy is the gift of God's undeserved kindness and care. And the people around us may not always deserve our kindness either, but Jesus still wants us to use that fruit of the Spirit and show them kindness, just like He shows kindness to us. And we are not doing this on our own. The Holy Spirit will help us. And the more we trust Jesus and see Him at work in our lives, the more we want to show kindness, that kindness to others. Is there someone you find it hard to be kind to? Maybe because they are unkind to you. Firstly, why don't you pray for them? Ask God to help them stop whatever they are doing and ask God to help them. Also, ask God to help you speak out and tell someone what is going on. And then do just that and talk to someone about it. Don't keep it to yourself. It's time for me to go now. Thanks for your help today. Join me next time as we solve the puzzles and find the clues to unlock the Bible verses. Until then, bye!